Indians. Yeah, they've made some bad choices about selling off places that they could have kept and rebuilt on. And then um, these houses that they're going to replace them, well, are they going to be like private um, or... No, the idea is that council? they're all social rent, they're all social. council houses. Um, and other projects that they've done elsewhere, they've done 100% council rent. This one, yeah. they say they're going to have some of the units be privately sold off to fund building a new community centre. Yeah. Which... You know, it's not ideal, yeah. and maybe we need to check into whether that's really true, if they can get the money from elsewhere. But they're saying it's still going to be 70% social. Um, social rent, and of that, half of those are going to be first first offered to people who live nearby. Okay. So, um, you know, that that's, that's good if they follow through on that. Um, I think what with the Haygate and Aylesbury estate, yeah. all of the controversies around that, people yeah. are... People are very wary. Yeah. And people know, you, you know, like developers come in and we'll we'll do this percentage of affordable similar rent, and then to as like time the goes elephant. on, it goes down and then down and then down. Like similar like to the elephant park coffin. Exactly. Room. People yeah. are really unhappy about what's going on there. But yeah. Um, the yeah, houses, we're, even we're the social houses, there are very expensive to, to oh, live really? in. Oh really? Yeah, right. I know someone that lives in that, so they're very expensive. But we're, we're trying, we're trying to basically sort of keep an eye on them, and they've they've got a whole charter of of how they go about doing these new homes yeah. and, and they've set out all of these rules that they've got to stick to yeah so you, you know if the council have made their own rules we can we can try and hold them to it yeah um and they might try and bend them or you know there's 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 you know little things that they might try and get away with that try and convince us that we need to do it one way and, we can, and it's not possible to do it that way but we're, you know, we're trying our best to make our own minds up about it and not take for granted what they're telling us. Yeah. I can't even imagine. I've oh, seen Simon edit as well. Like, it is, it is I've been not up Peckham as well at night times. Do you know what you're doing? Bloody like Toys R Us is the new baby new line. Yeah, what, that's what I'm you're saying. You're like, extending it. They're putting it okay, okay, on the ground, the train station there. You know, you know, know houses are going to trust you. Know, you know, that goes to Phoenix. You know, that you know, goes to Campbell as well. But they only store trains there. You know, like, you know where the. You know, like, near opposite Sacred Heart, before Sacred Heart, you know, like, yeah, yeah. it's like a little. It's not a bus carriage, but you yeah, see yeah. in there, yeah, that's, that's a tube station as well, right? Oh, they're really? thinking about opening it, yeah, but they just oh, store really? it from Elephant. Elephant Cars was the last stop it, and then they store the trains down there. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they extend it to there. Easy. Yeah, yeah, they're mostly going to make that tram from all the way from Lewisham, all the way from Lewisham to New Cross, from Bantam Brighton. That's what they're trying to do right now, so... Right. Yeah, they're going to have to. Echo benefits from this side of Peckham up to more Peckham right side. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what, separating, separating? Yeah, like, they said, like, by 2000 and something, like, but I was like, what does it mean? And the guy sent it back saying, basically, if you ain't got a profession, you won't be able to live in this side of Peckham, like, and I was like, oh, okay. They're not knocking down brick, though. No, they're not. They're, not. they're, they're just, they're just building, the they're just... Them three blocks is the beginning, don't you get it? They'll build that, oh, and yeah. you'll be like, right, they built these blocks, but they'll expand it and expand it, and soon and it will yeah, look yeah. like them blocks instead of yellow. It's not that, it's mm. to make a city, you know, mate. See, yeah, when you make that, a city, that, yeah. Is, and living like no matter the reputation that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. people are just coming in and yeah. living like, like Peckham's got a nightlife now, bro. Like yeah. man could go out up in up in Peckham now, bro. Like 15 years ago, man could do some tumble or something. Like, yeah, yeah it's equals. one is equals. Now you can go up there. Obviously, best students and that, but you can have a nightlife in Peckham. Bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause I'm saying that like, there's murders that happen and robberies, but people are still coming living. I'm like, yo, mm. like people that are upper class and middle class. Yeah, yeah like literally. they're like. People are getting murdered around the corner from their house. And kids they and love stuff. it. And they, they still love Peckham as well, bro. Yeah. Yeah, like I hear I hear these students on the bus, I'm going to Peckham today, going to Peckham tonight, like you can't pick them. <laughs> Man. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. Yeah. yeah. Um so you know that's that's what I think as a community we need to put our effort into is to figure out what they're trying to do <laughs> yeah. and make sure we get You're our the voice best in and there. the fish our um, fish and we're not misled yeah. you lot arranged the, the fun day that's around there yeah that's something that's been going on long before i joined so okay. every every tra gets a sort of set amount of funding each yeah. year and uh we use a big chunk of that to put this fun day on okay it's um, good like mate like a community spirit and exactly because exactly. sometimes a lot of 
negative stuff maybe happen around here so it's yeah. maybe wrong to kind of say take it away from the young children that because they live here because other stuff have gone on from people that older people and stuff that they shouldn't have to suffer to yeah. and it doesn't mean that there's they should be, yeah, be taken away from them really exactly yeah and i mean i suppose any state estate you're going to get you know bad people yeah. are living there but most people don't you know, most people just yeah, want to but have they, they how much people live on the state. The majority of the people aren't of a negative. Exactly, uh, exactly. Because there's a lot of people yeah. that live on the state, like over a thousand people. That and I think there. we do struggle to have people involved. We've got 545 units on the estate, yeah. and our meetings have around 15 or 20 people yeah. know, each month. Oof. So, yeah. you know, Some even, people, yeah, even if it's people. only about 500 people, and you know it's going to be probably about double that in terms of number of people, but yeah. um, it's fairly low turnout. But, you know, we have a few people that are committed and, and want to make these events happen. So. Cool. Asalaamu As Alaikum. The boy Django, you done know, man. Yeah? You know? A big other old school brothers, man. Ali with a badly crafty. Make sure you watch out for that. We are Pet Mom documentary. You know, home of the brave, notorious Peckham boys. Yeah, man, freedom's a must, man. Yo, with Ali with the Bally. What's going on? Finally, got to catch up into your party, yeah, and you've been making yeah. bear cameos. So, you said. I'm just so we, here, man. No, so so where's, so where, is, that, is this where you grew up, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Sumner Road, Sherlem, Oakent Road, Burgess, Yellow Brick, Goldsmith. What are you saying? All the, <laughs> all the North Peckham. Not that this side of but you know what I'm saying? It's all one, but yeah. Yeah, so, okay. How long did you live? How long have you been living there? I was, in born, Peckham? I was born in Edinburgh. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I never come from my board. I was born here, Guy's Hospital, London Bridge. Grew up like Oakent Road behind the Tesco's and whatnot. Them sides there, Bermondsey in the early 90s. And obviously that's the time, it's just after the Stephen Lawrence thing happened and I was a little kid and whatnot. And then towards the early, that late nineties, moved towards here, North Peckham. Back in the day, yeah, mm. there wasn't there wasn't really much of a Somali community still mm -hmm. in Peckham. So yeah. like you're like you're like one of not one of the first but your yeah. early generation of being Somali in Peckham. There's obviously yeah, there was yeah. some the Somali community's been in Woolwich yeah. and like Where's other dense. parts of North and like North London, West London and stuff, yeah, but and even southwest London, Brixton and them kind of areas. Mm. Yeah, but not so much Peckham. Streatham, they call Streatham Somali. Yeah, Streatham. Yeah. So what so what, what so like what's it what was it like being like growing up in Peckham where majority of Obviously, um, you're black as well, but I mean, like, a lot of Somali yeah, community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know what it is? Because there's uh, up Woolwich, Streatham, it's dense. I would say most, most Somalis in the city now in western, northwest London. But up here in southeast London, it's all like dotted about and frizzled out. And then Oaken Road was like the strip where all of the shops were, all of the, like, the Somali shops were. You know what I'm saying? Let me get my name. The fiends. Yeah. Hi, my brother. Yeah, that one. Well, go on, bro. What's yeah, the problem? Well, go on. I'm trying to get some change to buy something. You tell me. This is the norm. There's money everywhere, but I touch the brick. You're nice. I can't, I can't get known. No. You're good. Don't worry, man. We're doing a documentary. We are Pet Nam documentary. You're from the ends, right? Yeah. Oh, gee, respect and manners. All mm. of that. Mm. Man, I've lost the grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if you come back oh, in well, five well. minutes or so, we might give you like a couple of pounds or something. Right, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. See the hat you put on? What's that? Yeah. A wire? No, no, come, no. come, come. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> manners. You can never be sure, you know, everything's changed. <laughs> huh? saying the fiends are still yeah. around in Gloucester. That one day, I, I don't even know that one. That's, that's the next one. That's, 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 that's a, a bit. That's a new yeah. nitty. We are Peckham. Our children, you cannot start with them and just drop them halfway through. And what I found out is every teacher that I was inside that school there, with every white teacher, couldn't give a shit about the children. They're concerned about their mortgage, their position, their union position, extra money they could claim and there's a thing what they always expenses they love an expense mm -hmm. and you know what the expense is always on the children's head that's the problem you know and when i first got in there they used to have this thing called um what they call a morning time briefing and i tried to come into briefing for the first for the first four weeks i tried to come into briefing i tried to be a certain way and but you see, everybody's attitude in briefing, I found it was despicable. So then I started to mentally bully people in briefing just by looking at them. 
a form of intimidation because I saw how they were handling certain children and in the briefing I'll look at them a certain way and I'll intimidate them mentally intimidate them because when they see me looking at them they're wondering what's this guy with a turban looking at me for one thing that happened as well HMI came in and sat in the school Her Majesty's inspectors sat in the school for a year and a half <coughs> we're not talking a couple of months or a week <laughs> sat in the school for a year and a half to make sure or to see how the school functioned because the reputation of the school was getting caned at that stage there. Was this Warwick Park School? Right? Warwick Park School, before it even changed the name. Yeah, to something Academy now, yeah. Peckham Academy. Mrs Kerr used to go to local authority meetings with other schools here. Yeah. Mrs Kerr's that short total woman, yeah? Good headmistress, powerful and strong, but very short. She used to go to meetings, um, local authority meetings with other schools, and you know what? The other schools used to shun her. It's a shunner. Why? Because her school was on front line and everything bad in everybody <laughs> else's mind happens on front line. Don't get it wrong. Front line was hot. When I landed there, children used to leave. Just go front line and stand there until the bell ring. Then I had a word with Mrs. Kern and said, well, hold on a minute, because I know front line. This is night time. This is my end, you know. I forgot front line, get my things now and again, you get me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so I said to Mrs. Kerr, I think we're going to do a shutdown on this. Mrs. Kerr said, how do I expect to go about it? So you see dinner time, we had a lockdown on front line. And the people that used to break the curfew at dinner time was the girls, because they were very, very advanced. We had a couple of girls that come from Jamaica, the ringers. And you know what I mean by ringers. Not their age. They can roll dumpling. Mm -hmm. They know about dance hall and should be in hunting. But they come to school because they need that stamp. And guess who's giving them the stamp? Because no other teacher wants to give them the stamp here. Yeah, so Peckham had the negative attachment name to it here, yeah, basically. So did you, f did you feel that, that? Did you notice it? Well, I kind of noticed it from a certain step from a very young, young, bit, bit younger as well because when it's a neighbour, yeah, your own brothers, you know, part of Peckham boys from a very like, from, so I noticed that from like eight, nine years old, he was 15. Yeah. And I'd hear stories about him getting arrested and stuff like that. So I knew obviously I was quite aware. And I remember one time going to Peckham with my mum, and I was about, what, 10? There used to be an electric pay point machine mm. near, near Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you put your electric key in. Yeah. And obviously he said, my mum wasn't loaded, so she'd put the electric key in. Yeah. And I remember going on there once, I'll never forget these two boys. When, was, when the people was coming out to change all the money, yeah. She came, they, they came around, grabbed the money, and ran. That's yeah. the first time I saw pop, you see, you see crime. Yeah. That's about 10 years old. And that's what I've noticed. And obviously, there's head off to probably North Peckham Estate. Yeah. And these are the kind of things you start to, start to notice stuff like that growing up. And also in school, there are certain people in school, even primary school level age, to be fair, talking about Peckham boys, or all going to be Peckham boys, this and that, this and that. that look, right now, there's like peer pressure is a big thing. Do you feel like there might be peer pressure to get involved in some of that stuff or? Like calf, like seeing that stuff, it's like uh, get involved or not get involved. Like. You know, for me was, I kind of had some, but funny enough, even though I was at 12, 13, I wasn't so shit with Peckham boys at all. Funny thing, kids in school, before you still, because it was a school where it's like, it's known as a kind of ghetto boy in school, etc, etc. Yeah. Sometimes people kind of put in a category, you're yeah. from Peckham, you're from Peckham. And I'm like, <laughs> and sometimes funny enough, as a young kid, you wear that. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 because it sounds cool to other people who are not from the area, but from maybe Sydney and other stuff like that. So yeah. you kind of run with that. But my thing was more, f say, 14, 15, maybe 16. So that's, that's where I started to, that like, could be a uh, new, I see new, yeah. um, and wave, and etc. etc. Yeah. Like, that's where I see me sometimes, I mean, you see me hanging around. Yeah. And also a lot of men from Deitch as well, because you've got Docking Hill, not too yeah. far from where I was as well. Yeah, so yeah. obviously, man from there, I'm, I'm associating with as well. So you kind of being with me, it was never. I don't know why, but it was, I was never fully around 24-7. Yeah, I was yeah. always around, I always had that around me. So, yeah, because some people are kind of either Brilliant. involved or they're like, I know them, yeah, and yeah. like, but don't have to go out and do certain things with these people, but you you can be around them. So, certain yeah. time I was still around. Yeah. And I think the problem, with, I think no problem, but it's a blessing for me as well. My mum was always on my case from yeah. a very young age. Yeah. And I think that had a big part to play for me, yeah. because certain times I had to be in the house. 
swing. So when I was 15, 16, I said kind of push the boundaries. But then I saw yeah. the uncles came around, stuff like that came out after as well. To yeah. kind of implement what mum couldn't implement. We are Pekkanam. Not fit in, but like mm. you stood out like more, like not being much Somali than in the Peckham Bari, yeah, because it wasn't, yeah. it was mainly, it was like obviously, it's mainly West Af African, yeah, West, yeah. Af West Africa, you said you um, had your own headache, yeah, yeah. <laughs> West, uh, West Africa and yeah. Caribbean, you yeah, yeah. that for I say Brixton, like there's nothing, there's nothing, um, yard man here, but I say it's a predominantly, no, I say it's a numbers wise, a West African area, like Nigerian, predominantly, Ghana, so Ghanaian, Ghana, Ghana, yeah, you know what I mean, you've got a lot of people from Jamaica and whatnot, but. It's a lot more than Somalis, obviously, but it's not the most. You get it? Yeah. But yeah, man, being Somali and whatnot, going up in Peckham. You remember them days there, blood? Like, there's people saying, right, you're not black, you're black. Then you've got man's people saying that they're, they're not black. And you're like, bro, you're just making a problem headache for man. You get me? Gloucester's all changed now. So what was it like growing up in this, this area? Like, what was it like growing up Look on this? Look where Big John is right now, yeah? Flip it. All of them things there weren't even there. All of this was like some bit you can... There was a bit here you could... Yeah, it's a so go up, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, yeah, the dry cleaners, you can go up there, there's, there's a little ramp connecting that bit there. There was enough squatters and that, this was like them man's gangster's paradise. This is where <laughs> them, them look could live, you know what I'm saying? There was, and this, all of this weren't here. I come, out, I come out of jail and I see this. Did you get it? Yeah. I had to look at the block, start saying it from the ends. It's different. And this school here now is called Took. Yeah. Called Gloucester before, you know what I mean? That's Gloucester over there, primary school, living in the ends. As mad as things were, what's going on around the area and whatnot, it becomes your norm. You become desensitized to it, whether you're active or whether you're not active. Even man that's not that's never been on the road, I've got friends that have never done no crime. Like they're not things don't worry them like that because it's, it's normal. My man got shot on my road. This they're used to, it, you know what I'm saying to you. There was a bank robbery there, the test code is it's been taped off, someone licked it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Bro, there was one time, yeah, I was with Big John over there. And then we was on commercial way, like one summer. Man got stopped so many times. Remember he used to give you the pink slip? Yeah. My pocket was full. And these are the times people are just trying to pretend to learn the law and whatnot so that they avoid getting stopped all over again. Little things like this, I'm not going to lie to you. As much as man disliked it and everyone's making a fuss about boy them now, right, man just got used to it. Man. man didn't like it, man got used to it. So it did change you because you became desensitized to a lot of things that are not normal. You're not meant to get stopped X amount of times in one day. Yeah. When it changed into an academy, that was the biggest con because that's when they used the so-called gangster mentality of an area to change it into an academy and what it really was local authority were becoming bankrupt so they couldn't really deal with the schools because they didn't have the money so they go and call lord harris and some business people trump up an area to make the area sound like it's um, Dodge City, yeah, the Wild West. I can remember when the train station used to shut at six o'clock, and um, you see, when it come down to six o'clock before the train station shut, you want to see the white people running, running, you know, with their B pad or iPad, and it's like the Serengeti. Boom, everybody's running up right then because nobody wants to get caught, mm -hmm. if you understand me. That's when Pickham was a certain way. But now it's gentrified. So right now, the train station can open until all 2 o'clock in the morning time. People can't say nothing to people. You know what I mean? Buy your drugs on the road ain't no big thing. You know what I mean? Every white person is here buying their drugs. Simple as that. Come from Camden, Pickham's the place to be. You know, buy your drugs, buy your drink. But what about the black people from here in the beginning? Yeah, because that bossy building, what they got there, yeah. Born in Peckham. And we ain't got a pot to piss in. Yeah, we used to have certain buildings like Unity, Steyer. Yeah. But you see right now, us ain't got a pot to piss in. But they can come clear from Camden, yeah, and then go to the bossy building. They can own certain things there, yeah. And the government and the, the local authority are willing to support them with their ventures, investments their business ventures. and their money but our own children what are they going to support them with? they're not supporting them what they're doing is they're making more jail for them that's what they're doing more jails for our children but for you see people that come from middle class areas and the regentrification of it yeah man their fathers who could be a surgeon working inside King's College Hospital can go and buy 
a house for 200 and 300 grand and go and get to his daughter to go and put their friends in so they can go to Mount View College or Mount View College, yeah? Which is all to do with performing arts. Now in that college over there, I don't see none of my children going there. And my children were the best actors at the end of the day because when police hold them, they're good at acting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Make them get caught with two draw on them. You see, they're, they're getting bigger. They're great actors. My kids were there, like, because obviously I legally got my kids now, isn't it? So, yeah. Like, what, it's so a one bedroom. Baby. I needed a roof over my head in order to get my kids. Yeah. Then I do that. Get and my you said you're cutting this and you're purposely <laughs> overcrowding yourself. Yeah. Like, so it's not our fault now. Like, it's fuck. my kids, bro. What, what, like, how can I purposely be overcrowded? Yeah. But that's just the way it is, isn't it? Like, and then yeah. you're paying mad rent, like. In, in a flipping flat, that's just one bedroom. That sounds five, five inconsiderate like, to me, man. Yeah, but that's how it goes. Like, so okay, because it's not about yeah. it's not about us. Really, yeah, yeah, like you can see that, right? You, you take care of your kids, yeah. You're looking after your kids, so you've made yourself have more people in your house. No, it's like might be necessary for you to have your kids yeah, at your house. Like, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So like the really councils and housing people should look at things like that and not look at ways to not help people. It's like you're always looking for the loophole to get out of yeah, helping yeah, yeah. people. You're never looking for oh you know what? We could see you're in a situation, do this and maybe that might help yeah. you. You get me? If not come back we might try to help you again. Nah, you get there's it's not about us, everyone you got to do for yourself yeah, kind of thing that they don't. 100%. Top, bro. 100%. Like, so, mainly you guys think that's a, it's a bad, it's like a, not a positive thing really, right? Well, not for us, like, not for the natives of... You know what it is, yeah? I feel that it is, um, it would be a positive and work our ways if, like, imagine if schools taught us, we was, we was taught certain things growing up, so we would be kind of prepared for these kind of things and get mortgages or we can get sort out of things a certain way, but because we wasn't taught, we wasn't taught about these things, we don't oh, yeah, get taught about these things. Yeah. We're behind, to, we learn late. They definitely need to bring it into the schools though, 100%. Like, we know that though, innit? Like, everyone's crying for that as well, things like that. The real stuff, what, the stuff that you really need to know about in life, that we don't get. education, like mortgages, tax, yeah, like businesses, businesses, and that like, we don't get taught really that stuff unless you go into mad deep education and arts. Shit, you get me? But like I said earlier, like the gentrification thing, like like I said, it's good in a way because we've been crying out for our area to be done up, innit? it? Yeah. True. But then, like, I where said, are we going to get to enjoy it? The pushing out part <laughs> is just not is not is not the bit we feel in it really. Like I said, look. So the thing is, a lot of a lot of people see, or young people see as well is that if their parents don't have the stuff also and the parents go through struggles with money their whole goal is success is to make money because the, the, their parents things are we don't have money to put, in the car, put food in here or we don't have money to buy the clothes you want all that kind of stuff so when kids get an opportunity you get exposed to if a small bit of money it gets addictive as well because yeah. then it's like I can get anything I want I can do this I can do that but what we teach sometimes teach young people as well it's about a long game innit it's not always about instant money because instant I say there's a thing the old saying I say whatever comes fast generally goes fast, isn't it? Yeah. What takes long to build, yeah. it stays for a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. And I always say as well, nothing I've had has ever been from illegal money, it's just been from working. Yeah. And it comes with you got sometimes you've just got to have patience. It's that thing you just got to have patience and the good things will come. And also I'll say one thing as well is this. If you're going in growing up in an area, everyone I know who kinda of made not everyone, but most people I know who made illegal money. They couldn't ever feel safe with their stuff. And that's something I learned growing up. So whether they have bikes, whether they have cars, people was always onto them because they didn't make it through the legit manner or yeah. legit ways, innit? Yeah. So basically what I was saying as well before was I was in accounting and finance in uni. I was in a, and I got to the end of my second year, basically dropped out into my second year. Um, I had a serious motorbike crash and that kind of changed my outlook on life completely. Yeah. So the whole thing from money went to basically doing something I would do something I enjoy. And having my mum said, we worked for Worlds of Council for 30 years, working with young people. And also the person I was with at the time as well, wanted to be a teacher. So they were the kind of things that kind of led me to start going on, working in schools and stuff like that. Originally it was after school clubs. And then I got a job in the school for my, luckily my neighbor, teacher, was bugging me all the time, bugging me, bugging me, bugging me. So I applied for a job, started to teach the system first. And then I started to do that behavioral stuff as well. 
and I started to learn as well. I had a skill at wasting working with people, or just working with people, young, young children, who sometimes have behavior, behavior difficulties. Actually, for where I'd actually got a knack for this, I can actually help them. And also, coming from a background where, because spending six times in secondary school, spending once in primary school. So I kind of knew that being in trouble doesn't always get you anywhere, but at the same time, I could understand where the children were coming from um, when they were lashing out. Funny enough, there was a place in North Peckham, um, just near Wyatt Park, I used to go to a, in primary school uh, for behavioural stuff. Uh, I got suspended for 15 days. And basically, their thing was, you have to go to this place, otherwise you can't like, come back to school. So every Saturday morning, I'd discuss my anger issues and stuff like that. So these are things as well, because I had anger issues while well growing up as well. And they're things which I went through. So when I see young people going through that in these primary schools, I can generally understand what, sometimes what they're going through. And also I can reason with them as well, because it's very easy to someone tell you don't do something if they don't understand what you're doing, mm -hmm. or don't understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But if they can't understand where you're coming from, it's a lot easier to relate to that person. Mm. And I find that a lot now, even with young people now, where even the ones in schools, I feel like I can relate to them because I can see what they see outside. I can see what, what they think is the, the, the right, I guess, path for them to go in their head. But I also know where that ends. Say that again, because 17. Yeah, so was that, how do you keep away from gang affiliation? Like, how do you navigate through an uh, area that's so... The problem, that the, the issue, here's my thing, yeah. Where man went, obviously when man was young, man was mischievous and whatnot. When man was really doing X amount of things that gangs were doing, it didn't really, how did I say, um, someone like me didn't fit into that category. I had, I had a whole next problem. My problem was just doing crime, not about avoiding gangs, car. Most of the man in gangs, man I went to school with them, man went to primary school with them, um, man might have gone to college with them, or man might have grew up with them in the ends, or know them properly from youth club, from different blocks in the ends, or whatever, man, 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 not so getting into a gang, so, I don't know, unless you're from outside the area and you come to the area at a certain age. I oh, get that's that. what I'm saying. So like, you feel like you feel like you had, you got, you got, a, you got, a, you've got a choice. Yeah, because yeah. I'm seeing these gangs. I've, I've no, been there. With a lot of time people think that you've, you're forced into stuff like no, that, no, but no. no, you have a choice. People yeah. might get forced to be someone's young buck and whatever. You've heard stories and whatnot, but of what I know and my experience, I don't see that man. Yo, you know, like for a change, you have to, you have to take part in my documentary. You know. Right. Yeah. So. So, so what's your name? Raymond. Raymond? Yeah. Actually, you, you look familiar, you know, I might actually I've yeah. come across. There used to be enough sound systems, yeah. innit? Um, Virgo. Um, Virgo sounds. Okay, look. Okay, yeah. No, up um, Queen's Road. Okay. Okay, yeah, so how long you been living in Peckham? About 30 years. 30 years? Mm. Yeah, man, that means you know all the estates every, before. Yeah, no, most of the people, innit? And the estates the, before you know, they before mash. it mashed down. Yeah, yeah. It's a redevelopment, North, innit? Yeah, the North so Peckham estate. And they all. said the system failed, yeah? Yeah. And it needed to be restructured because of crime, drugs, yeah. immigration and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, in, and like, the, the people, you know, the rent and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's too much and that. Yeah, so to keep good um, relationship with the government and stuff. Yeah. And it's a council property, like an industrial area yeah. and a welfare state. Yeah. We develop in it. Yeah. Even down Oaken, I mean Wolf Road, you know, Taplow Estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same thing, innit? Because after a while we get overcrowding, you know, in the estate. Yeah. And like um four or five people living in one bedroom flat. Like, yeah. Everybody on benefit and social security benefit. Yeah. Because Beckham is a welfare state, innit? Yeah, yeah. And it's made of prison, my brother. You say welfare state? Yeah, like mm. most of the people. I want benefits. Innit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the government when they get rid of them, yeah, yeah. What they're saying they're taking up. Is that a lot of the money? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, wow, well, man. Mm. So, I uh, am cool. You did mention, yeah. We're gonna talk. Keep it real. You get me? Mm. Um. So I know I've got. I'm gonna, say I'm gonna give you a couple of pounds, but no. If let's be real, mm. that it, you might be using it for drugs. Right? No, I don't. I don't do drugs. You I don't. Was, I was in hospital in it. That's you fine. Do, you used to do crack. No, 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 no. What kind of drugs? Um, just weed. Just weed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and then they were they, what, what, what was it? And then it gave me mental health problem. You know, you're not the first person that's uh, I've spoke to someone else who says this, who does the same thing, who said the same thing. It's yeah, the weed. Yeah. Mm. Is the weed that strong? Yeah, because it's the skunk, innit? So it messes up your head. I only come out about a week ago, innit? Is it? From where? From where? Mar Marsley, innit? Oh, you're from Campbell? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the cannabis is that strong? Yeah. Love you. All my benefit and that it's not fixed back in it. I have to wait for them to. Yeah, but yeah. when you're in there, they cut it off in it. I have to wait. Yeah. Mm. Okay, wow. You get me? So, alright. 
What was your experiences of growing up in Peckham? Like, what school did you go to? Did you go to school around? You know, Samuel Peeps. Huh? Samuel Peeps in Brockley. Yeah, I, I heard not. I used to live in Forest Hill before I come to Peckham. Okay, so what was your, what's your experience of growing? Because it's a documentary about Peckham. What's your experience of Peckham, like, the people and... You know, Peckham, like, Peckham is a good area, yeah? Yeah. Like, the people are nice, innit? Yeah. But just that we don't have anything, in it. You know, yeah. money-wise and stuff. Like, because every, most people are... get the lights on over. Yeah. Most people are on benefit, innit? Yeah. So we don't really have anything, innit? Yeah. But it's... We've got good relationship with each other, innit? Yeah, like yeah. Everybody's... So you're saying a good, a good community spirit and stuff like good. that? Yeah, yeah. But just that like the children, when they leave school, yeah. because they're eating, drinking, living yeah. in... The, 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 the woman, them, they have children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guys, they lock them up and... Yeah. And then they start over again. Okay, mm. so, so, what's it, so what's in that box you have there? It's a shoe. A shoe? Mm. What, are you, what are you gonna do with that? <coughs> are you gonna try to sell it? Well, yeah. Yeah, so okay, yeah. That's, that's too but small. It's, it's gonna be hard to sell, isn't it? Mm. You know, vinyl records? Yeah. You know anybody buy them? No, 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 no. It's no, hard no. to sell yeah, them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's, after, that's before CD. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, get yeah. me? Mm. Alright, cool. So, alright. My wife. There's a, there's a you call the well. We call him Coffee Ned, yeah? Because there's another thing about it, yeah? I always give people names. I make the names. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And Coffee Ned. My you Coffee Ned, yeah? Yeah? My wife used to work at a school as well, but no one knew that's my wife, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And one day my wife was doing the dinner duty and, <coughs> you know, Coffee Ned must have tried to hold up my wife and put her on the wall. Now everybody's running around, oh, rare, rare, rare. and then my wife come and whisper to me, said, well, boy, Coffee Ned tried to hold on the wall and that lot. And my wife, no, nah, I was stay, because I'm not going to do nothing to Coffee Ned, but I'm going to play reverse psychology on Coffee Ned. I walk everywhere for Coffee Ned, but couldn't see him. So you see, when he come down half past, I said, let me go to Coffee Ned's house, go look for him. So I went to Coffee Ned's house here. Coffee Ned's looking out the window, waiting for me to come. So I said to him, what are you going on with about you holding up people like that? And he showed me he had a bit of a difficult um, afternoon. And by the time me and Coffin had done the reason, Coffin is my son. I couldn't do not the Coffin it. Especially when I know that the lifestyle which he had to go home to. So I adopted Coffin Ed. And Coffin Ed is my son, all now he's my son. So there's ways where you deal with people. Another one, a young man told me fuck off four times in one minute when I sat down next to him when I first went to school. And that young man is my best, one of my best right now. Yeah? And believe me, no matter where I see Jelani, my friend, he's my son. Now, this is the same you that told me fuck off four times in one minute. What do you think like missing from, like, obviously I feel, because I do similar work like in schools as well. I'm a family support worker and that stuff, yeah. Like, what do you think's miss, like missing from um, basically dealing with the young youth of today, even from the past, because nothing really changed too much with some of us. Uh, you still don't get the recognition you deserve. That's what it is. What it is is that the, the, the establishment think that there's a way of dealing with children because they keep on... Remember their age groups, they, they're into uh, um, things like... Um, in, the, in, in the 80s, there was a man called Dr. Spock. Yes? I'm not talking Star Trek. I'm talking a man in America that used to think he knew the most about children. And he'll have all these theories and write them down. And you know what? The white people will be taking these theories, yeah? Not using the theories on their own children, but trying to use it on black children. Yeah? So most of the, 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 the how the white establishment sees the black child is all off Dr. Spock's theories of his own, which causes an issue. Now, what's missing, really, what is missing, yeah? We need to look after our own. How can you go and expect a middle class, upper class, white man to have any empathy for what you're going through when you live in the ghetto? Because you grew up in the same way. When you grew up, did you ever feel that, yeah, man, like, I can, I can make it, I can achieve something really good coming from this environment. Like, what was it like? Did you always feel, nah, man, there's not really much, like, your hopes of where you can get to in life oh, from doing it? That's a deep 
question, you know, but honestly, you no, know, when I was younger, yeah, I didn't really look at the environment because it was my natural surroundings. Yeah. So. Because you know, like a lot of people, like these young people, have got, well, there's like, nothing like, boy, yeah. I've got to live like this because there's nothing. Like, what can we do? We're from. We're from the gutter, so there's nothing that. Yeah, no, I still. Yeah, man, I never had that mentality like, oh, I'm from the gutter. Yeah, no, it's... I still thought 100% I was going to be a footballer. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, it was good, good enough to be a footballer. Like, there's thousands of people from the areas we come from that are good enough to be footballers. I still yeah. believed I could be it. It didn't happen, but. Like yeah. you said on the but police was, side yeah, as well. Yeah. Even if you weren't doing nothing wrong, innit? You like, do just... get harassed <laughs> slightly when you're from this environment. <laughs> On the real life. But advice to the youth as well, man. You can do anything you want. Yeah, and man. Don't let it. The, the the poorest of backgrounds don't make no difference look, now. Like in here, if, if you really, look, I'm from one of the poorest of backgrounds. I know. Believe me, like <laughs> if if you let that define you you will be the poorest of people. If you want to say you're mental and let that define you, you will be mental, in it, Like, so... 100%. It's about excuses, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to make something, if you want to create something, go create it. Find a way, in it. Use what you can and make the most. Your, your, your kids growing up here, so what things that you've maybe learned and experienced now, so what kind of messages are you passing down to your... Your, I'm, your kids and I'll stuff be honest with you, like, they're still growing up some, from yeah, around here listen. yeah like I'm, I'll be honest with you I literally obviously tell them about the dangers that like, my kids are a bit older now as well so they're teenagers isn't it so yeah. it's even it's deeper now tell them about the dangers my, do, my oldest daughter she's not so bad but I'm not gonna lie like Ash like you said you yeah. see him around he's it's like the apple don't fall too far from the tree type yeah. thing, you know what I mean you're on the but, road you know? but at least he's like well he's got no his, his dad can maybe pass on some like spirits and flipping knowledge and to help him in these situations yeah so he does 100% to... I do and he, and he knows that as well and like obviously these kids out here you know when people say oh these kids these kids need love and shit like yeah. they're my kids bro I love them to the fullest I even I even love these other kids out here that ain't even my yeah. family bro yeah, like, friends and stuff but like. yeah they just need to they just need to know that the danger is out here bro it's, it's real fam like so just be careful in it and just go to school and because I was telling young people, don't do this and don't do that. But some of my close friends, and it wasn't because I wanted to be around certain kind of people, it was just the other friends I grew up with, they were doing certain things. So it came a point where I had to kind of cut some people off because they weren't doing basically, they weren't living life which I was telling young people to live in it. Mm. And also, this was that thing as well, I always tell people, you have to either be in or you have to be out. You can't be half this and half that. Because what happens sometimes, one side will catch up with you. And for me, it was this. When I had my good, good friends, they got themselves in proper, proper tr deep, deep trouble for themselves. People always come to me, have you seen so-and-so? Have you seen so-and-so? And I'm thinking to myself, why am I associated with what that so-and-so is doing? Because I live a clean life, always yeah. have to live a clean life. And one, to me, it's common, common sense to me for, you know, one day you get yourself caught up in their, in their dramas. Because if I see something happen to them, I'm going to want to get involved and help them. And that's the wrong thing, because I'm living a very good and clean life, innit? So, for me, I'm just trying to kind of cut people off and basically said, stick to as clean life as, as I can. Don't get me wrong. I've got, I've got people I grew up with, I'll say hello to them and this and that. But at the same time, I know what direction I want to put my life in, isn't it? That's yeah. the key for what? Key, I think, for young people as well. Listen, if you've got friends who are doing this and that, listen, you sometimes, it might sound hard for you to do, but you might have to make that cut and go, you know what, I can't be around you. Because yeah. you've got to know where you want to be, innit? And if that's yeah. not where you want to be, make that cut. You can't do both. Yeah. We're having this problem at the moment. A lot of rappers are having the same issues. Because yeah. they're, they're, they're legit they're right. in one sense, but yeah. they've still got their friends on the road. And what's happening is they're getting caught up in dramas and they're losing their dreams because they feel like, I've got to be loyal to some something else. But yeah. it's not about that. The only person you have to be loyal to, this is for all young people to listen to, is yourself and what you want to do. Hey, hey. Real old school OG. I know. Hey, if you know, you know. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, me, my God. Hey, Shek was just looking for you. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah, no, the one on top. Go to. Warwick Park, home of the brief. Yeah, Warwick Park. AK Academy at Peckham. Started in 2002. Growing up in Peckham, this guy in Warwick Park and that. It's different to how it is with the Academy at Peckham right now. Back in school, 
you drop on the concrete because it's skim gone, you get me? Because just bare concrete. They've got the little soft little thing now. Astro 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 you know, little smoothed over. They've got fingerprints and that. Them times it was dinner card, I swear, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. fingerprint to go buy lunch and that. Had to try and indoctrinate the kids from, from early to get used to the fingerprinting system and that. That's just before we left though, but. Yeah, no, no, the ends has yeah, changed a lot, yeah, man. Yeah, because that's um, that school being on front line, it was like that crazy. That was on the like, news, they gave it 28 or 27 yeah, million. It's nuts, it's one of the worst. My school, Chulsa, the Michael Ramsey, Woolworth, Kingsdale, all them schools they were, yeah, Apostle. Okay, so obviously this is this is a document about negative to positive, and you've yeah. been, and you've you've had you've had a negative um, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cut to be real. If you think about back in school. I'm not trying to say we we're all angels and that, but you know the teachers are always focused on a certain type of kids and that. So for for us, speaking for myself anyway, it was hard. Finished school, minimal GCSEs, and I'm thinking, raw, what's the choice to be made here? Well, obviously the, the, the household man grew up in, there's no if, but, or maybe, you've got to step forward and you've got to keep moving, you get me? So my thing, I took, took on college, made it through <laughs> went on to uni made that through so you stayed away from like any like uh, negative kind of things that like outside of school kind of getting mixed up in certain things yeah, or not again it's just uh, the upbringing really and truly okay having the family around man pulling man away from certain things you yeah. get me so yes my brother oh, yes, you yeah, yeah. good yeah get down man yeah man I've got a leopard so, yeah, just like that, my brother, man. and then Ali, you had a negative experience. Which, yeah, man. But the whole thing is about positive. So, you've you yeah, had you both you were both you were both friends, but two yeah. went down a different path. Look at this in school. Like John was a giant, like physically. John looked like the year, big John looked like the year eleven. So I called big John. So man going to year seven. If you're with John. You're nice because he's the same size as the year elevens. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna talk about certain antics and you know what I'm saying. The man kept up with in school where that's just innocent child stuff. You get me? When we left, went college, we used to always do things together and whatnot. Chill together, go to each other's places and yards, shubs, whatnot. It took me to my first one, I think back in 02 or something like that. All over hours, we all over woolly, nah. And then when we got, as we got older, all the other stuff I got involved in, because even through school days, I was getting arrested. But I weren't getting kicked out of school. I weren't them used to come to school and had anti-social behaviour in school and yeah. got into madness in school. But whatever happened on the road used to happen after school. You get it? Yeah. As I got older now, it's been trapping yeah, all the day, so, as I, <laughs> so as man got older, I avoided going to Feltham and going to young offenders and all these things there. But I was getting arrested from like the age of like the 13, 14 and whatever, Peckham Police Station first time. Yeah. Ended up finally going to jail. Um, 2013 November and then come out January 2000 and, um, 2018 so 22 to 27 come out turn things around it's my first sentence God willing my last convicted for two things now so while so while you was in prison yeah um, Big John what yeah. was happening with you you I heard you I heard you like done really well for yourself yeah, yeah just went to uni bro man just working with charities you know trying to help other young people that grew up in the same Areas myself just kind of have a different vision, different outlook. Because growing up around here, you heard about, you heard about certain organisations that's there for the young people. You're always thinking negative towards that. It's not for you because of X, Y, and Z. You get me? But through me going through, I just learned that that wasn't the case. Like in life, nothing's handed to you. It's what you bring to the table as well as the opportunity that's there for you to to grasp. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so obviously my thing's different to him. He chose a different path to me, but here we are again, 2020, we're out here. Let me keep it true, 100%. Through all yeah. of that, I would have thought John would have went down that path, and I wouldn't. So while so you was graduating the, the no, university... I went uni before him. The, the, Ask the, him. The H I went uni. The, you, you, but you graduated... Then H I ended up being wanted for four years. You graduated HMP University, and you graduated in a different and university. Uni in jail as well. Different. Imagine that, I've gone three times, and the first year I managed to finish, but alhamdulillah, so what's written for you is written for you. Now we do charity, good things, big up. Which we've seen earlier Man on in the documentary, Musa's yeah. resold. Yeah, I need to say after that. Yeah, Musa's yeah. resold um, um, charity, which you got are handing out sneakers. Yep, yep hundred percent. We do that. Every month, we give trainers to the most risk at youth and the homeless. You, you're doing the resold work, and you've also you're also part owner of. She got um, like your best Man part of, Musa, of Man Musa, 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 the founder which we've of also Man shown on. Moose's part as well earlier yes. on. Yeah, Moose is the founder of Manhood Clothing, Manhood Women, and he's the founder of Riso. And I work alongside him and I partner with him with that. And big up for him as well. 
and um, we do the podcast soul sessions. It's also also founded, and he's the host. These type of things because recently we've seen, you know, with Kanye West, and also we've seen with Will Smith, this is cheating on him, and and the whole world being a part of that. Okay, right. so you're doing quite. You're keeping yourself busy doing yeah, a lot man, of things right now. Good people around you, you know what I'm saying. So Each what do you have? Important do you think that was when you came out of prison to have someone like? No, nah, you know it was. Me and Moose had the link from before that, and he come check for me when I was inside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Same as Big John, same as Ibs, all of the all of the man, my family, my friends, big up everyone. Uh, Musa come visit me specifically, catched up with me, reached out to me when we went on a visit. He broke down what I've missed out on while I've been away for that for that up to up until that part. And then when I come out, he's like, "Listen, bro, this is the plan. This is what we're gonna do. We're very rare. This is what I've done. When I come out, we need the man to come together. We push it. So cool, say nothing. Ever since then, now we've got our office coming up in a couple of weeks. Watch out for the launch. Alhamdulillah, we've done our outreach the other month. Next month again in Charing Cross. And then we go around the nationwide outreaches, Birmingham, South End, all over the country and whatnot. Should be getting a van soon as well, so we can do that more properly and correctly. Okay, van, yeah. yeah, we're giving out hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of trainers for free on the street. I think that's a real positive thing, considering that's obviously you've come from this environment, you've had to go through certain hardship, like negative experiences, yeah. which is prison, yeah. and then it's led you to actually giving things like working for free to a certain degree yeah. um, and giving back to people that are much less fortunate like them. but you know what people normally write you off once you go to prison no no um, okay. most, like, of the, most of the people that people beg from with they were ex-prisoners these people on dragons den that you're begging it with one of them was a prisoner you know what i'm saying there's many in life what i realize is nobody cares until you win no one cares even if you was an immoral person or whatever and even in islam we know everything's about its ending and charity doesn't do dec decrease in wealth you know what i'm saying so with that being said yeah man, like, our man went from sitting down with man next door getting natural life to sitting in the yard, me and Musa one day and then from the will of Allah that his phone just rang a billionaire called his phone a billionaire that you can google and if you know, you know you know what I'm saying to you know man called man's phone and built a link from there, you know what I mean now we got office and that running how did that happen bro? that link, you know how that link began? between me, from that day you, you bucked him for the documentary that's where it started to frizzle and he didn't even know till we got the phone call that's from Allah bro and his hard work and our hard work, you know what I mean? The progress is, yeah, definitely. Down the city, got shooters like ISIS. Lock up the money in the ISIS. Me, they're the breakers of crisis. Bally start rapping, they like it. When I went in the gallon, were crying. No itching, no comment, no lying. Always been on it, the man just changed. Drop in the place, confident, brave. You could be changed, anti your face. Good morning, there, mate. Bus open the safe. I done my time with the bumper. Okay, go down to Sumner. Every girl got my number. Comfy in jail, without a weapon. Don't be drunk, how you grab and peck him. I miss things I can't mention. World Cup and election. Family, funerals, dinner time, it was a tuna roll. How can they say that they're hard? Who stuck up the shop near the shard? Back on the street, design on my feet. Always been winning, there is no retreat. Hoping to save, play it, repeat. I'm bopping and jailing the money. Ladies write letters, they want me. I got love for Shogun and Gujarati. Hustle so hard in the back street. If you treat supercar like a taxi. Calm down, no stress over there. I got sentenced twice in a year. My heart knew Eric have no fear. Open the safe, brother club, you're done now. We are pet now, documentary, you know what I'm saying? Big up crafty. No flipping to yellow brick. Mm. What? Show. You done another thing. Jungle, my nigga. Done no. Big up my brother Jungle. Watch a skit now. Give me special one, man. For me and Craft. Big up the man, the man. Big John, Crafty, Timmy, Braver. All of my guys, man. SC15. We are Pet Nam documentary. Balaclava, Cole Sang. Gone. My guy, Ali. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Big up, 100%. Finally got your piece yeah, in there, man. We're done, man. We're done. That's it. Collapse. The last one. Right there. Big up. We are Petnam. Rolls Royce. Some the Rolls. The last one. We're done.